Here we consider another example of a beam for which solutions are not tabulated. The beam is made of three simpler beams, which are separated by the hinges. The middle beam is loaded by force P, and our task is to determine the deflection under the force P. So, it is natural to decompose this beam into three beams by cutting at the hinge. So if I start with the free body diagram of the middle beam, and I'll think about two reaction forces at B and C, then these reaction forces by the third law will be applied to the left beam and to the right beam. And now I can simply look at the free body diagram for the middle beam and conclude that from symmetry, the force P is equally split between RB and RC. And uh, it's easy to summarize this result by simply redrawing this cartoon with two forces. Here we are. Now, what we see is the fall that the deflection at this point comes from three sources. First, of course, this beam bends. Then this end moves down, and that's dictated by the displacement of the tip of the left beam. And at C, there is also movement down, and this one is dictated by the deflection of the right beam. And so we have three superpositions. The middle beam bending, the deflection of the left end at B, and the deflection of the right end at C. So the left beam. We have a table. And according to this table, we can use this expression, replace P with P over 2, L with 3B to get this result. Now, let us do pretty much the same for the right B. The same table. Here, the force is P over 2, L is equal to B. Divided by 3i, we have this expression. Now, let us put it for the middle beam. So, the way the middle beam operates is the following. These are the displacements of the endpoint. So, if I look just at this action, right, without taking the beam bending into account, then the displacement of the center will be simply the average between these two guys. But, of course, in addition to this mode, we have the bending moment, the bending mode, rather, where we suppress the displacements of the ends, and we apply the force P, which produces bending. Of course, this case is tabulated, and that's the tabulation, and now we can put it all together. So the displacement comes from the deflections of these two points, right, and the one on the center is simply the average of the two, plus the deflection associated with bending of the simply supported beam, and here I evaluate this expression using L equal to 2B, and the end result is 5PB cubed over 